All right. Uh, welcome to another Lightning Ventures founder interview. Today, I'm with Andy Schoonover from Crowd Health. He is the CEO. He is decentralizing. Uh, healthcare crowdfunding, uh, which is not something we usually talk about here because this is a Bitcoin uh, only syndicate, but this is a really interesting deal uh, and we're investing and we think that it is definitely a uh, game changing, uh, very cool company. We're going to get into it. So Andy went to Stanford University previously. He has a little bit of a history in venture. So uh, raising funds is, is nothing new to him. Uh, and he is orange pilling without the prescription. No prescription needed <laughs> to to orange pill the members uh, over at Crowd Health. So, Andy, how are you today? Where are um, you today? Um, well, I'm, we're actually uh, based in Austin, and I'm at Bitcoin Commons in Austin. So uh, we we co work there, and right next to I'm sitting right next to to Marty Bent's uh, you know place where he does his TFTC you know podcast. So um, yeah, coming to you from Austin. All right, that's really cool. So Andy's made it a priority uh, to infiltrate the Bitcoin community and try to garner their support. So before we get into crowd health, if you are coming to the upcoming uh, BitBlock boom uh, in uh, Austin, Texas uh, later this month, he will be there. They have a pretty fairly large presence, so everyone can uh, can talk to Andy as well mm -hmm. as a promo code, uh, which is Bitcoin, to get a discount on your member premium uh, mm -hmm. and. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Okay. Um, so first things first, um, what is Crowd Health and why did you decide to start this company? Yeah, sure. So I was running a healthcare technology company. Um, we were doing remote patient monitoring. So monitoring folks with blood sugar, uh, you know, diabetes, COPD, CHF, things like that, um, monitoring it out of the home. And so I sold that company to a private equity firm back um, in 2014, um, came off of that, uh, two years of kind of transitioning out of that company. And as such, I didn't have health insurance. Most of us as Americans, right, get our health insurance through our employer. Um, so I went to healthcare.gov. I thought that was my only option. Got a plan for 1200 bucks for me, my wife, and my two girls. I kind of joke it worked until I had to use it. Um, my little one had an ear note, had a, a, a recurring ear infection. So we went to the ENT who said she needs tubes in her ears. We go to the local hospital, get tubes in her ears. It was a 15 minute procedure. It was $8,000 for 15 minutes. And I was just like blown away by this. Um, and then, so what we came away from that being like, hey, we have health insurance. Like that's what health insurance is for. These big, you know, unforeseen events. Um, well, my health insurance company came back and said it was medically unnecessary. And so they weren't going to pay it. So I had to stroke a check to the local hospital for, for $8,000. And I was pissed, as you can probably imagine. So I called my health plan and said, I quit. If you're not going to pay my bills, I'm not paying your bills. And then ex over the next two years, um, uh, my family and I were uninsured and we started trying to build some tools that allow us to operate outside of the health insurance um, kind of space, like the legacy health insurance world, right? Um, we learned how to you know, use cash pay. We learned how to negotiate. We learned how to find really good doctors who you know, were, were significantly less expensive than the not very good doctors. Um, so we used all the, we, we found out that hospitals, even with a big event would negotiate those events down and stretch them out over a period of time. And so it was easier for people to pay that. And so what crowd health is doing is bundling all of those services together and allowing people to truly and viably operate outside of, of health insurance. Um, and so that kind of in a nutshell is, is what we're doing. I was, in Austin, talking to Jimmy Song, who I'm sure you and everybody else knows, Jimmy, um, you know, and I was telling him about this cool company that I was starting. He's like, man, you know, the problem with health insurance is we all put our money into this big pool of fiat. That pool is melting. <laughs> you know, we just saw today, what was it? Eight and a half percent inflation, you know, this month, something like that. that. That pool is melting and therefore you have to drive cost, healthcare costs up to make up for that that melting. So in healthcare, we not only have a money supply inflation, we also have just a, a, a chronic inflationary, you know, impact from just being healthcare for regulatory and a whole bunch of things. And so it's like, what if you allow people to put money into um, 
Bitcoin as opposed to into this big pool of, of fiat. So that's how we introduced our, our Bitcoin um, component of this. But I can kind of talk about the mechanics of how it all works, because I think it will probably make more sense um, if I kind of give you the, 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 the back end me mechanics of it. Does that sound good? <laughs> it, it sounds good. Let me just pause there. I want to comment on a couple of things. So I was in healthcare uh, for eight plus years. I actually worked very closely in the appeals and denials uh, department. Okay. So I have a lot of knowledge on how this works, right? How the billing game works. And I and my wife have been self-paced uh, as well as uh, oh, my, right. par yeah. my partner and many friends. We've been self-paced for a long time. And to go in and whatever it costs, it's $700. You can negotiate on the spot. You're there with an an Amex card in your hand. Uh, it's money in the bank for them. They're going to get paid. They don't have to go back and forth throwing resources at these appeals and denials to try and get paid. Um, they love cash pays. They love people without mm -hmm. insurance because they're actually getting paid. And most people don't realize that, you know, a $20,000 surgery can be, you know, 10, 12, uh, 15,000 or that savings that, uh, that comes with it. So, um, I, real quick, so the the premiums that you pay with a health insurance company, uh, that is gone. Okay, that is gone, gone month after month. You're three fifty, you're five fifty, you're eight hundred a month. That is gone. And when you contribute to a health savings account, which a lot of people confuse what you're doing with a health savings account, it sounds similar. Um, those health savings accounts, there's a lot of limitations on what you can do with that money, as well as it's kind of a one way street. Uh, you're not able to, you're certainly not able to hold it in Bitcoin. Let's start with that. Um, <laughs> but that, that money doesn't really come out and it's, it's limited on that. So it's up to you, Andy. I don't know if you want to kind of talk about some of the differences sure. between that, or if you just want to go in the nuts and bolts of the platform. Yeah. I mean, I think I can go into the nuts and bolts, but also uh, address that specific thing too. You know, the, like you said, if you pay a premium to a health insurance plan, it goes into the health insurance black hole. Um, insurance companies generally will, you know, hold that money, the uh, return on that money, whether it be in a savings accountants or, or some kind of, you know, uh, investments is their money, not yours. Um, the difference between that and, and crowd health is we open up a bank account for you um, when you sign up. And so every month you're putting money into a bank account. So if you're between the ages of, I think it's six and 54, which most of us are, hopefully, um, it's 175 bucks. So 175 bucks a month, you put it into your account. Crowd Health takes $30 of that for a, just a, a subscription fee. Um, and then there you go, six, six to 54 is 175. A little bit more if you're younger, a little bit more if you're older, and then families of four plus are 695 a month. So crowd health takes of that 175, 30, 145 is put in your account. Now in the Bitcoin version of this, 75% of that will be converted to Bitcoin and held in a Swan Bitcoin account. Okay. Um, and so we have a partnership with Swan, we're integrated. Um, and so that's how that, how that works. And then if Bitcoin goes up, you get the appreciation of that Bitcoin. It's all yours. Right. If the Bitcoin goes down and you don't have enough money in your account to pay for the health event that we ask you to pay for, then you have to put more money in. Right. So you have the up and down risk of of that Bitcoin, not us. Um, so let's just think, say if, if Bitcoin's at what, 23 today or something, um, and if it goes to one hundred and fifty thousand. Right. Um, and so you've got a whatever that is, uh, a, a six times, five and a half times or whatever. Um, return on that Bitcoin, the, all of that upside is yours. Um, you own that upside. So we actually have an appreciating asset that is backing this up as opposed to a depreciating asset that is, that is fiat. So the important point of this is if you leave crowd health and there's something is still left in your bank account after you help fund other people's events, then um, you get to take it with you. So it's actually your bank account, your cash, you get to spend it however you want. Now, real quick on the health events. So, so this is this is kind of the crux of how this works. But just says, Mike, you know, you have uh, you know a broken arm, um, and you know it's six thousand um, dollars. Mike will pay the first five hundred dollars of that. Crowd Health will go and crowdfund fifty five hundred. So what we'll do is we'll go to all of our members or a few. Of, if it's fifty five hundred, we'll probably go to fifty five members at a hundred bucks each. We'll go to fifty five members. And we'll say, hey, will you pitch in 100 bucks from that account that you have 
to help Mike with his broken arm? Um, and they can say yes, or they can say no. It's totally voluntary. If they say yes, then $100 is, is going from Andy's account, because I said yes, to Mike's account, so that Mike has enough to pay for his broken arm. If I Andy says no, then I, we just move on to the next person. So the question is, is why would say Andy say yes to Mike's broken arm? Well, I would say yes, because I know Mike now, but what if I didn't know Mike, right? It's not like pediatric cancer or, you know, tugs at your heartstrings, right? Um, but we have an internal reputation score for each member. So if Mike had in the past said no nine out of 10 times that we asked him for, for funds, um, he would have a 10 out of 100 or a 10% score, reputation score. And so members of the community would see that when they're asked for money to help Mike. So Mike's been a not to pick on you, Mike, but like a crappy uh, member of the community. And so the probability that Mike gets his, his, uh, his, his broken arm funded is really low. If Mike had said yes, nine out of 10 times, so a 90% reputation score, the probability of him getting funded is really, really high. So, you know, 95%, 96%, um, if 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 you have a score that's higher than 95 or 96 percent, it's 100 percent um, so far, um, 300 different bills so far that we've crowdfunded for people who have a 95 percent or higher. All of those have gotten funded. Um, and so that's how that works. And so, you know, why do it this way? It's one. Our biggest hurdle here is regulatory. Um, you know, the, the the health plans don't like what we're doing. Um, because it allows them to exit the health insurance space. And so, you know, with regulatory, the fact that you have your own bank account, the fact that you make voluntary payments and that you get the money back if you don't use that money, all of those things are put in place to show regulators, hey, this is not health insurance. This is people funding other people like we've done for 2000 years in this country before the 1970s, um, generally, right? It's, you know, if somebody in the community gets gets hurt or injured, other people in the community gather around them and help them out. And so it's kind of bringing the community back into healthcare. Um, and as probably most of your people know who have health healthcare experience in the 1970s, the health insurance companies kind of wedged themselves in between, you know, members of the community. And we're trying to take that health insurance plan out of the middle of that um, so that we can be more efficient and, you know, more, more effective in getting these healthcare bills paid. And as you said, it's like, we're getting 50% reductions. We got a healthcare bill the other day that was $1,400 for an ER doc. One, it was like one of seven uh, bills, $1,400. And we negotiated it down to $200. So, you know, we're getting significant discounts by negotiating directly with the hospitals. And so that's why our, you know, the, the amount of money you're spending on your healthcare every month is about half of what it is on healthcare.gov. Okay, so you touched on a bunch of things that I <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I have some questions about uh, the uh, insurance governing law, state by state landscape, how that works in comparison yep. to you. Okay, I want to handle that at the la at the latter. But um, so when when it, Mike broke his arm, all right, and it's mm -hmm. ten thousand, it's ten thousand dollars. Now let's say that there's five thousand members uh, in in the platform in the pool. Why wouldn't you send uh, a $2 request or a $3 request to 5,000 members, which to me, I don't care. I'm paying $175 a month. I have health insurance. This is great. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. catastrophic coverage. It, it seems much easier to be able to, and this was a question from our group, by the way, it seems easier to stomach a small, a, a small amount versus the $100 hit for a selected group of people. Is there a method behind sure. why you're doing it that way? Yeah, there is. And so, you know, we get about 100 bills a month um, now. Um, and so we'd have to ask you 100 times, or maybe not 100 times, maybe it's 50 times because we, you know, pair some of them together. But, <clears throat> you know, if somebody submits a bill on the second of the month, I don't want to have to wait until the 15th of the month to get that paid for. Right. Um, you know, because I'd have to stagger them, you know, throughout the month or something. Right. And so I want, instantaneous payment. Um, and so that this, this allows us to, to, to pay that those bills or get crowdfund those bills really, really quickly. Whereas, you know, otherwise I'd have, there would be a pretty significant delay if I asked everybody for every bill, 
you know, either I can do that every single day and people would get annoyed or I'd have to wait and do it, you know, once or twice a month, which means it's delayed. And so what we do is, you know, our, our backend table is, is basically saying, um, what percentage of funds have you used for giving? Um, you know, right now we're like 24%. So 24%, $24 of every hundred bucks that you put in has actually been used to fund health events, which means $76 is still in your account. So if, if somebody gave $23, we'd ask them first, right? Before we'd ask somebody who gave $24. And so it's, it continues to kind of generate that so that everybody is giving the same percentage of their, their contribution to health events. Um, and we just found that to be an easy way so that we're only hitting up people, you know, once a month or once every six weeks. And we just think that's more effective in getting real feedback as opposed to just, you know, hammering them a hundred times. That makes sense. So let's go over the process here. Um, so... Mike has his broken arm. It's $10,000. Okay. I, before I contact crowd health, I'm going straight to deal with my issue, right? Whether that's the hospital, which hopefully people aren't going to the hospital, uh, wherever, wherever they're going, they go see the doctor. Okay. And then how does that happen? The doctor wants payment then. Do I explain to them that payment will be coming later? And then how, how does, how does that work? I'm not making that payment, correct? Or are, are yeah. you paying it out of a float before the negotiation starts? And then no. I'm also, and then we also haven't touched on the 20% commission for everything that you're able to negotiate. Yeah. So let me give you a real, real life example. So um, in Austin, about three weeks ago, maybe it was about a month ago, we had somebody who tore their ACL playing pickleball of all things. So, she, you know, it's a Wednesday night. She tears her ACL. She calls us on Thursday morning and says, Hey, I think I tore my ACL. Do you have a really good orthopedic surgeon in Austin? And we say, yes, we do. Here's one, right? Go to this person, um, which is actually one of the absolute best. Does a bunch of University of Texas football people and all these kind of things, right? So really great orthopedic surgeon. So she goes and sees the orthopedic surgeon and the orthopedic surgeon says, yes, you definitely um, you know, have a, a, a torn ACL. We're going to have to do surgery on that. Um, so we're calling that person back and saying, Hey, what did the orthopedic surgeon say? So he's like, we have to do surgery on it. So then we call the orthopedic surgeon and we say, how much is this, this surgery going to be? And he says, it's going to be in this specific case, it says he's, it's going to be $20,000. And we said, what if we pay you the day of the surgery? And he said, well, um, a part of this is, you know, the facility that I'm going to, which is St. David's, which is the big hospital system here in Austin. And we said, okay. Will you go to the ambulatory surgical center, you know, that's next to St. David's? And he's like, yes, I can do that. And so that's like, was like $2,000. Um, and so we saved, you know, $6,000, like just by moving them to a different location. And then the doctor said, okay, well, we'll, I'll reduce my fee by, I think it was like 30 or 40%. If you pay me on the day, the anesthesiologist will reduce his fee. And so we got all these people to reduce their fees. And so I think that surgery, it was, the quoted price was like 20 we got it for 10. So we took 2000 bucks of it, right? We $2,000. And so then we have $12,000 that we have to go and crowdfund 10,000 for the surgery, 2000 for us. We go crowdfund the 12,000. Um, the $10,000 goes into the account of that, that woman who tore the ACL 2000 comes to our account. And then that 10,000 is wired or ACH directly from her account to the doctor, um, and we use a third party to do that. Um, and that doctor then it has that money on the day of, of the surgery. And the doctor calls us and says, will you please send me more people? Because I love this. I love getting cash on the day. So that's how that works. It sounds complex on the back end, but we take care of most of the complexities. That woman just has to call us and say, I've got a torn ACL, I think, please help me. And we have a care advocate on our side that is that woman's care advocate. So everybody has a care advocate internally. It's not, you're not calling into a, a call center. I'm talking to my care advocate. She's saying, please help me be my ally in this you know, journey. And we are. So we have these conversations back and forth with her to help her through that. And so you know, she had to pay 500 bucks of that. We successfully crowdfunded the remaining, I think it was 11,500 plus or minus. And um, you know, it was a great outcome for, for, for everyone. 
then she needed, I think it was 20, you know, PT visits. Um, and we said, we called the PT people and it was, I don't know, remember exactly what the date, the, the, the funds were, was, I think it was like 150 bucks or something like that per visit. And they said, we'll take 110 or something if you pay us up front. And so we paid them up front for this. We saved a bunch of money that way. Again, crowdfunded all that up front. And then we got, you know, a 20% of that, that savings too. So that's the way we take care of most of this stuff up front. All of that on our end was probably, you know, seven or eight hours of work. And we got probably 2,500 or 3,000 bucks for it, right? So the margin on this is pretty good margin for, you know, these types of events. Um, and so, you know, people think that's like, oh, wow, is that scalable? It is because the margin is through the roof. Um, and so that's, that's how we, we would operate under that specific situation. So the deductible, the $500 deductible doesn't come into play uh, for those PT visits because you bundle all 20. So it's not that she's responsible for each $110 visit. That's Correct. a package deal. And it's, and it's a part of the same health event, right? So you're, you're 500 bucks, you put up the first 500 of any health event. So your ACL tear included your first um, pediatric surgeon visit, which was like 225 bucks. The surgery, which was all in 12,000, all the PT visits, which was, you know, another like 2,500 bucks or something like that. And that all is one health event. So you're only responsible for that, that, or excuse me, you're only paying that first 500. We're crowdfunding the rest for you. Okay. So to which date. Is, by the way, it's a beautiful thing because, right, you go into the ER, it's 500 bucks, right? You have a baby, it's 500 bucks. You have cancer. 500 bucks, ACL tear, 500. So you don't have to worry about these huge deductibles of five, 10, sometimes $12,000 where, you know, we had 250,000 families last year go bankrupt, even though they had health insurance due to health events. Right. And so like the whole point of health insurance is if you have a, a, a major issue that it's not going to put you in financial distress. Well, clearly that's not happening with, with healthcare because we have 250,000 families with health insurance going bankrupt. I mean, that's just preposterous to me, which in our case, it's like, hey, most people have 500 bucks um, that they can, they can, you know, take out of their bank to pay for their health event. Well, and, you know, anyone who's had insurance, right, whether it's 500 a month, 800 a month, even 350 a month, which I don't even know if that, that exists anymore. Uh, anyone who's had insurance, if, if you're a crowd health member okay you're paying 175 a month let's just say that there were, you get hit up that month uh to to contribute a hundred dollars that is a massive win <laughs> that is a massive win you have funds left over in the that account okay? yes exactly you, you, you are you are saving money that you can retrieve at any point in time especially if you're if you're saving a bitcoin so the hundred dollars or whatever happens that that wouldn't bother me as a member because the benefit it's already in your account right it's in your bank account i'm not asking for a hundred dollars more that 175 or 145 of the 175 is in your bank account or in bitcoin so i'm not asking you for any more than what's in your account um and so it's not like more money being put in. The max we'll be asking you for is that 145 per 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 month. Um, and and we have we have people now with I was I I posted one on Twitter the other day. It's like somebody's got I think it was like three thousand dollars or something like that sitting in their account that if they they left today, they would be able to take that three thousand dollars with them. Whereas if you were in health insurance land, that would be poof gone, right? And that's the beauty of this. It's 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 almost like accumulating savings through your healthcare, which has just been unheard of. Yeah, you're stacking, you're stacking sats if you're if you're doing yeah. it with Bitcoin as well. Um, you're getting that appreciation and you actually know that you're covered. Um, exactly. and you're you're doing great for other people, you're cutting resources. It helps the providers uh, who can't get paid and often have to get in this uh, hell hole of trying to get paid. Okay, so real quick, yes or no. Has any deal not gotten funded to date? None. None. Okay, great. So everything, uh, everything is working. Uh, ninety-eight percent of the people that we ask for funds say yes. Um, you know, and so every everything has gotten funded to to date. You know, and okay. that that was that was the big question in our seed round is is this going to work, right? And we found it it does work. We've done it over three hundred times now, and so you know, this next round is saying, okay, let's let's uh, really scale this thing up. 
Okay, so we're going to talk about geographies and markets where you're active. And then how about partnerships with a specialist, partnerships with LabCorp, the blood work, the stuff like that. Is that down the line? Do you have some of that stuff now where you can kind of, um, how does that work? Yeah, so it's interesting. There's a um, little kind of niche industry that's occurring that's trying to gather as many cash pay rates as possible throughout the country. So it's kind of like a, <coughs> excuse me, kayak for cash pay rates. And so we can actually go into this, this uh, company and say, hey, I need a orthopedic surgeon in Austin, right? And it'll pop up with an orthopedic surgeon in Austin. It'll give us rates that that orthopedic surgeon in the past has given to other members. And so it does allow us to, you know, have people in, in almost all 50 states. We're in 49 of the 50. We're still waiting on Rhode Island. Um, we're in D.C. and Puerto Rico. Um, and so, you know, we're not geographically limited to, to where we can where we can go. Um, I will say our, our big states are, are Texas, Florida, Georgia, um, Georgia, for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but you know, that, that's where we are kind of some, some density in those, but like I said, 49 of, of the, of the 50. Okay. So, um, the churn rate, uh, people love this product. Uh, you are getting members in their staying. Do you have a percentage on how many people leave the platform? Yeah, it's about two and a half percent a month, two and a half percent a month. That's great. Um, it's pretty, so, pretty darn good for a consumer, you know, direct to consumer. And you can you can leave whenever you want. You can join up whenever you want. We don't have like one year, you know, time frames where you, the open enrollment. There's no open enrollment period. Um, but so you know, and and sixty percent of our people who more actually more than that now, probably more like sixty five percent of the people who join us are coming to us from a place of where you and I, I was and you are right. It's like I'm cash pay. Um, but I would love the opportunity to have a little help in the, in the case something big happens. And so it's an uninsured population that's joining us. Um, and, and so, you know, we think that's a, a, a great thing for the healthcare system generally. So for that 175 a month, at least that's what it would be for me. Uh, mm -hmm. What other services are included in that uh, as far as telehealth, uh, mental uh, wellness. Uh, I, I know that there uh, are some benefits there that you also share with your members. Yeah. So um, like I said, you have your, your own internal care advocate who's your ally to help you walk through this. You have access to, to him or her, you know, every, every day, basically. Um, we also will negotiate all of your, your bills for you. Um, regardless of, of, you know, the, the situation, we're happy to negotiate all those bills. Um, we have access to um, virtual health. So we have access to direct primary care, virtual direct primary care. So you can see your primary care doc online. It's included in your subscription fee. It's no additional charge. Um, we have virtual urgent care. Um, so instead of you know going, getting in the car, jumping and going to the urgent care, you can go to your app, press a button. You'll get an urgent care doc on the, the line within two minutes. Um, and so that's included hundred percent. We give you access to low cost prescriptions. So, um, we have that integrated in our app. If you have a prescription, you're trying to figure out how much it is. Our prescriptions are running about 60% lower than what health plans are paying for those same prescriptions. Um, we also provide legal services. So for some reason, the hospital doesn't want to negotiate with you, which they're actually legally obligated to negotiate with you. Then we will provide you legal services. Again, that's included in your your um, your your monthly you know, contribution or your monthly subscription. Um, we also have me mental health, or we call it emotional health, where if you can have unlimited therapy sessions. This is with a counselor. So again, on your app, you press the the button and you can talk to a counselor almost right away. Or if you have a specific counselor you want to talk to because you've been talking to them regularly, you can schedule something with your counselor. That's all included. Um, so we have lots of other stuff that's that's included um, just beyond kind of this big crowdfunding component. We're really trying to provide you with all the tools to enable you to operate outside of health insurance. So we are, um, th this is like nothing I've ever seen before. Now, maybe this has existed. Maybe this is an old idea and I've just never seen it. As far as like competitors or uh, like a competitive landscape, uh, well, clearly none of them are, are offering Bitcoin. Um, 
is, is there anyone else uh, that you know of that's in this? Um, that's question number one. Question number two, what is the big push now? Is it going to small and medium sized businesses? Is it marketing to them? Is it marketing to health insurance brokers? Do you have sort of a, a structure that you're going to be able to offer them? Or are you just orange pilling the masses uh, one state at a time? Yeah, I mean, it's it's mostly orange pilling the masses one state at a time. And we we're, we are going out to Bitcoin related companies um, because we believe that we can be an extension of their mission, which, you know, most of these Bitcoin companies are, you know, widespread adoption of, of, of Bitcoin. And so why not allow your members to, you know, invest in Bitcoin as opposed to, you know, handing their money over to health insurance plans. And a lot of these Bitcoin companies are sub 50 employees. And so they don't have any affordable care act requirements. And so we think we can offer them something that's really, really interesting. Um, so we are working with those. We reached out to a bunch of Bitcoin companies. We are finding that um, we these companies are very, very interested. Right now is the time that we need to be talking to these folks because um, you know they're, they're making a lot of their decisions in August, September, October for open enrollment in November and December. And so um, we are finding that too. But I'm, I'm telling you, you know, 90% of our business is just coming from folks like me and you, Mike, who like we're tired of of health insurance and paying into this you know crappy system that really kind of screws us and we want to do something different um and so we're making a huge push on bitcoin right now because bitcoiners are our people right we're we're all bitcoiners inter internally um you know almost all of us own bitcoin and you know these are the type of folks that want to be not just you know sovereign in terms of their money but sovereign in terms of their health, right? Like you don't want a health insurance plan being between you and what services you can provide. You should be responsible for your health. You should be responsible for whatever services you you, you want. And we allow you to do that. So, you know, we're, we're kind of calling it the, the, the medically sovereign individual. Um, and, and that's resonating with, with Bitcoiners. The insurance is a money suck. I mean, it's just a black hole, and especially when something comes back denied and you end up spending hours of your day uh, fighting with the hospital yourself. I know I've been in that um, situation a number of times, and, and it's just absolutely terrible. I mean, this is a thousand times better. Yeah. Um, but well, here's the thing, Mike, right? If you get something in the mail from a hospital or your health plan, you have no idea. It could be $50. It could be $10,000. Like, we'd, you, you have no clue right? Like, how do you make the over under bet on that? You really can't, right? Like you have no information. And it's like, that's the crazy thing in our system. And so with us, it's like, hey, if it's 50 or 5,000, you're going to pay 500. And we'll, we'll take care, of, we'll, we'll help you crowdfund the rest, right? And that's the beautiful thing. And just like the ease of, of mind of that. It's like, if I go into the hospital, it's 500 bucks and crowd health has shown an ability to crowdfund this stuff, you know, in the past. So that to me would, you know, ease my mind when I got that hospital bill that you're like, oh shit, like, you know, how much is this going to be for? What am I on the hook for? Um, so that's what I think is a big, big value prop. No more surprise bills. So is there a commission-based structure possibly in the future where brokers would be able to sell this product? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I, I think, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at it currently. I mean, my, my general theory here is that, you know, brokers get involved in things that are so complex that you can't understand them by yourself without having industry expertise. Right. And, um, and I, I this is just so simple, um, that it's not hard to understand. And so, man, I'm, I'm really trying to not take the six or 7% or whatever those brokers take, you know, as, as commission, to, to do this um, because I, I, I think our, our, our service can stand on its own. Um, and I don't, I don't really want to be, you know, lumped into the same options as, as health insurance. Like that's just not who we are. Um, so I, 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 I might change my mind on that, but right now I'm like, we're, we're seeing such great growth. on just going after the, the one-off individuals that I don't have any plans to offer a commission structure in the, in the future to, to brokers. Um, because I think, the incentives there are funky too. So what about uh, crowd health employing its own uh, staff physicians uh, to be able to do some of these things uh, in the future? Is that, is that on the roadmap? Could be if there are changes around, you know, laws, state, state regulations, right? Like if we have a, a, 
the doctor in Texas, that doctor can only see people in Texas. And so, you know, we would have to build that out state by state, which is kind of a, a pain in the ass, but we could do that with scale. Um, we could definitely do that with scale. And I think that it could be, you know, instead of a couple of thousand members, if we had 200,000 members, it makes a lot more sense for us to do something like that. So I would definitely say it's down the road, but not in this round. All right. Well, I think that that is good. Um, we are really excited about Andy and about Crowd Health. I can't wait to be a customer. Uh, so if you see a, uh, and you get an email saying that the the Muzzman uh, had a baby, I hope <laughs> I hope that I hope you help fund that one. Uh, and this uh -huh. is no joke. I mean, we're talking one and a quarter million ARR this year. He's expecting to do five million next year. Uh, this is 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 growing. This is a fantastic mm -hmm. company. Be sure to bother him at uh, Bitblock Boom and hit him with all of your questions and uh, look for that Swan Bitcoin rollout 101. Remember, promo code is Bitcoin if you want to uh, save a few dollars for, I think it's six months is your promotion. Is that right? Yeah, instead of that 175, it's 99. Um, so almost half, half off for, for six months. Very cool. Um, and it's joincrowdhealth.com. Uh, and I think that'll do it for us today. Thanks so much, Andy, for uh, hanging out. Yeah, and, and try crowdhealthbtc.com if you want the Bitcoin version, crowdhealthbtc.com. How am I just hearing that for the first time right now? Crowdhealthbtc.com. Got to update the deal memo. Um, <laughs> wow, look at how cool this is. When did this go live? This no, it's has been, been up, up the whole time? It's been up for a while. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That is so cool. And down and down below, all the way down the bottom, if you want to learn more, I, I was, I've been on with uh, Robert Breedlove and Jimmy Song and uh, Marty uh, Bent and Leah Halpern and a bunch of other folks. I've been on the Swan, you know, cafe, Bitcoin cafe a couple times. And so, you know, you can, can watch some of my, my interviews with those folks it's all the way down to the bottom of this page. So um, I hope you, you'll, you'll take a look. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, there's a bunch of them. Dave Smith, who, you know, libertarian guy who also is a big, you know, uh, Bitcoin fan. So um, lots of stuff down there to, to take a look at if, if anybody's interested. All right, cool. Well, listen, thanks for hanging, Andy. And uh, we're looking forward to wrapping this up. We have a tight deadline. This is, uh, we're pulling it on Friday. So this is kind of a last call and I'm glad that we're able to get this video out. Thanks, Mike. All right, buddy. Bye. See you.